Alright, so welcome to this lesson where we're going to take a look at the 3D environment. Now many people get confused over certain terminologies inside of the 3D environment and that's because it just hasn't been clearly illustrated to them. So I help to clear this up in this lesson. So what I'm first going to do is open up Blender. This is a free program that you can download from blender.org and as you can see I just have a very basic world where I have a cube. That's pretty much it. Now, in the 3D world, you have two different views. One of them is perspective, and that is the current view that I have now. The other view is the orthographic view, and they display things very differently. So, what is the difference? Perspective view is how you view the world through your own eyes. So let's say I have an object that sat right in front of me and I have another object that's exactly the same size and dimensions as the first object but it's placed further back. What's going to happen is that other object looks smaller. So take for example this. What I'm going to do is copy the cube and paste it and then what I want to do is move it out and then also what I want to do is move it backwards so I'm going to move it back 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 as you can see as it keeps going further and further back it gets smaller and smaller and smaller so perspective mode in 3D is how we view the world that makes sense that's further away from me so it's smaller even though it's the same size. Now what's the difference between perspective and orthographic? The difference is that it does not respect the relationship from the view, which is where you are at the moment, to the distance. So imagine having that object exactly the same size. You can't differentiate whether it's further away from you or pretty much exactly right up close to you where the other object is. It doesn't make a lot of sense, however, that is orthographic view. And it's good for positioning certain elements and so forth and so on. So let's go ahead and go down to the view menu and let's take a look at now changing this from perspective mode, the way we see the world, to orthographic mode. So now I'm in orthographic mode, what I'm going to do is go to the view menu and let's just view this to the left. Alright, excellent. So, here is now a problem. As you can see, these are exactly the same size. Which one is further back and which one is more up close? Well, if I was to just show you this straight away, you would say, I have no idea. Which one is closer, which one is further away? So this is what orthographic mode is. And it obviously, as you can see, there are benefits to this. Because what I can do is I can say, right, well, I want this object to line up parallel with this object. So I can click on it and I can move it across. So now they line up perfectly. So that's what orthographic mode is for, is for sort of helping you line things up, getting things parallel, your objects parallel. However, if you want a realistic 3D world, you cannot have the orthographic view switched on because it just doesn't look right. It doesn't make sense to us because everything is the same size. And so what happens is it looks completely wrong. So if I was to just rotate this, on the z-axis right here so I'm going to rotate that around you can see that it looks very very flat what should happen is these lines should go inward because they're further away from me but it doesn't because I'm in orthographic mode and everything is flat everything is the same size but when I go into perspective mode you'll now notice that those lines are slightly offset they're slightly going downwards so each face of the cube is perspective to my view and that's basically how perspective mode actually works. And what I want to do now is show you about vanishing points. Now many people get this very, very confused and mixed up. But you have your orthographic view, which has no vanishing points whatsoever. Then you have your perspective view. Your perspective view does have vanishing points. And that's how you actually draw things in perspective. So, for example, if you take the image that's on your screen, you'll notice that the 
top image has two vanishing points, one to the left and one to the right. Now, the problem is that I'm looking at this from a certain perspective. So how do I change that perspective? Just like I'm doing here in the 3D viewport, you'll notice that when I move around right here, I'm changing my perspective. It's still in perspective mode, but I'm changing my perspective. And that's what vanishing points actually help us to do. So what I can do is move the vanishing points. You'll be able to see that you have the vanishing point that's sort of central, sort of the height of a normal human being to a building. And then you have a perspective of a very low down perspective. So what vanishing points actually enable us to do is change our perspective. Whether we are very high up, very low down, in the center, or wherever we are in the world. But it helps us change our perspective. But however... If you take a look at the orthographic mode, which is now below on the bottom part of that picture, you'll see there is no vanishing point. So everything looks flat. It has no perspective. The lines are all parallel, whether they're further away from us or whether they are basically right up against our view. There is no differentiating between the two. And that's the difference between orthographic which is flat, no vanishing points, to perspective. Perspective has vanishing points, which allow us to determine if something's further away or something is close to us. And also vanishing points, when edited, allow us to change our perspective. Now, I just want to add in that when artists are drawing in 3D perspective, whether it be on a canvas piece of paper or, let's say, an illustrator where they're creating a graphic, they're not programming, that basically means that they're going to draw the vanishing point so that they can get the correct perspective. However, when we actually take this into the coding world, it's very, very different because what you actually have is effectively one vanishing point or a focal point within your scene. And once you have that one focal point, all of these vanishing points are basically a mirage. They don't actually exist, but you can sort of see them, you can visualize them, but obviously they're all calculated mathematically. They're not actually there. So they're sort of like a mirage. But basically, it works off this same principle, and that's how we sort of understand how this is all coming together and working together. And I'll use it as an analogy, even though they don't exist, because you can sort of understand what a vanishing point is and how it's actually being used to affect our perspective and change the look and feel of our scene. So I hope that's cleared up a lot of terminology and a lot of confusion about the 3D space. So thanks for watching this lesson and in the next lesson we're going to move on and actually start to code and start to use some of the CSS 3D transforms. So thanks for watching.